So it was August. We've been working from home now since February. And the one thing I do miss from being in the office is the gym. You probably noticed on a couple of my other uh, videos that I joke around about my quarantine handles or you know, looking poofy, fluffy, if you will. Well, I need to change that. It doesn't look like we are going to be able to get into any of the gyms anytime soon. Uh, so we need to fix this problem because I am not spending a thousand dollars on a weight set. Especially when I have a shop that has automotive parts. So today, on this episode of Five Lakes Garage, we are going to build a weight set. What's the most important thing about building a weight bench? Well, just free weights in general. It would be weight. Okay, I do a lot of automotive stuff here. You probably noticed that on a lot of the other uh, videos. But today, we're gonna use some of those leftover parts. So this is what we're gonna use. So, first thing you're gonna need is a bar. Well, I got a bar right here. It is a one and a half inch, 120 wall DOM. So, I'm gonna use that as the bar. We're gonna weld some stuff on there to keep the weights from actually flopping around. So, what are we gonna use for weights? Well, for the heavy ones at uh, 53 pounds a piece, we have rear leaf, leaf springs off of a K5 Blazer. Yes. For 27 pounds a piece, we have the front leaf springs of a K5 Blazer. Front disc brakes for a 545 BMW. Those are rated at about 18, 18 pounds a piece. We also have the rear brakes from that same BMW, the 545. And those come up to about 16 pounds. These are the rear disc brakes of the super sexy Honda Odyssey. So I have all this stuff here. And I have a bar. I have weights. But we need to put them together. So here's my idea. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do everything. I have this 2.5 inch... Um, exhaust tubing, which I'm going to cut it out into small little sections, about the same width as these leaf springs. All right. And then I'm going to take the grinder. And these guys here, this right here is a Z-rail from a network rack. So what I plan on doing here is actually taking it up to the belt sander upstairs and cutting them down so it will actually fit perfectly on that bar or all that tube. I'm going to weld that in and I'm going to weld it to the leaf springs and I'll hang it from the bar. All right. So this is basically going to be the <laughs> do it yourself DIY weight bench. So let's get started. I know you're excited because I'm excited. Let's go. And we're going to do it all in the middle of a tropical storm. It's going to be awesome. All right, so we're getting ready to weld this up. And what we need to do is clean it off. We use our grinder. All right, it's got a wire brush on it. We need to clean both pieces, make sure it's nice and clean. Also, wear gloves. These aren't exactly the best gloves, but they will work for right now. Also, safety glasses. You always need safety glasses. And actually doing stuff like this, you would really want a full shield. I kind of broke it because I kind of ran over it. So, I don't have a full shield, but I do have regular glasses so get your phone out of the way because you'll tear that to pieces so let's um all this grease grime and all that stuff you're not going to get a good weld you got to get this crap off so let's get going with our wire brush beautiful that should work about like that. Yeah. All right, so things you're gonna need to do. You gotta get your welder set up. You know, always need a good ground. 
Actually, I'm gonna make a good ground right over here. Oh, that was a little messier than I thought, but it's all right. All right, so we got a good ground. You're gonna attach your grounding lead to your work because you gotta make a <coughs> complete current. Circuit, rather. All right, so this is just basic MIG welding. Don't want to have any twist in your cable because ah come on. All right, all the way down here, you have, you have this is your electrode. This is the wire. It's actually going to be fed out as you weld. This will be uh, burned, so it will be joined into your metal. Now, if you look here, we have a very thick piece of steel. We have a very thin piece of almost tin. So. How are we going to join these two together? Well, um, as you know by now, I'm not an expert, but some of the things I do know is that you will spend 90% of your time on the big steel and just kind of pull, pull, uh, pull it up and then drag it to the thin stuff. It will already be hot enough to actually melt these two together. Or most of your heat in your bigger steel and then draw it up to it and go back down to the big steel. Draw it up, go to the thing. So if you want to do a count, so you get one, two, three, one, two, three. So you do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And the more you can get that repetition down, the better your weld's gonna be. All right, so let's get this shot. So I'm gonna take my safety glasses off and put on my helmet. Now, the problem with this helmet here is that it does have is auto darkening and it uses the sun or the ultraviolet light from the weld to charge it up. I'm not sure how charged it is. So uh, right before I strike it, I'm gonna close my eyes just in case until it starts to charge up. Now, um, on your welder itself, here, come on over. Come join me at the welder. All right, so we have on and off. That's on. Okay, so with this one right here is very basic. Let me just wipe it off a little bit. She's a little dirty. So anyway, you can go up to 30, uh, 25 to 135 amps. This right here is your wire speed. Now the wire speed is mostly because of the material that you're using and also your preference. So you kind of want to have that little popcorn going, like a pop, 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 pop. Then you're making some pretty good stuff here. Um, since this is pretty thick steel, I'm just going to put it all the way to the max. Um, one of these days I'll go get a 220. This is only a 110. It works great for everything I need to do, but it does take a little bit longer. So I want to put it on D, maybe four and a half. We'll try that. And if it's not where we want it, we'll knock it up or bring it higher if we need to. Oh, and also I'm doing this uh, right before the rains come again. So it's not exactly ideal, but we'll make it work. Not too awful bad, a little too much wire speed. I'm gonna knock that down just a little bit. Now, you can see the penetration through the other side. And uh, you do wanna have the discoloration uh, because that means you got enough heat that actually went all the way through the material. So, I'm just gonna burn this in, and then we can put a uh, piece on top. Also, something else you wanna look into is the different type of materials. Some of this materials, as you can see, I'm doing this outside. Um, this right here is probably got some galvanized in there. You don't want to breathe that in. So as I'm welding, I'm actually holding my breath. Um, if I had a nice helmet that actually had ventilation to it, that'd be uh, even better. But as you can see, that's on there pretty tight. I'll quit, keep burning this around and we'll be done with this one. Start on the next one. All right, I think I got everything lined up. All I gotta do now is tack it in place, make sure it's where I need it to be, and then I'll go ahead and weld this part in. And then we can work on the outriggers. So let's go. All right, so the uh, actual top mount is in. It's on there pretty tight. Now, if you notice what I said before, when I was welding the big steel to the little steel, basically spend all your time on the big steel. Well, I had to set it for the maximum setting because that's what I needed for the uh, the larger steel, the leaf spring. Well, this right here, this is only exhaust tubing connected to a Z-Rail. Both of them are very thin. Uh, don't spend a lot of time on there. 
kind of move around a little bit. If you don't, it blows right through. And I don't know if you noticed that I did drop it down to a C, which on this particular unit, uh, drops it down a, a quarter. So instead of like 135, it might be like 120 amps. So like I said before, you just kind of feel it out, see what you like, see what you don't like. So let's look at the balance. Okay, not too awful bad. Could be better. Um, maybe on the other ones, I will make sure it's balanced. <laughs> um, I didn't take into account that the ends are two different sizes, but that's okay. It could be crooked. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just going to be lifting it with the uh, with the bench. So this guy is almost done. Let's get some outriggers. One more thing: uh, when you're welding like this, don't follow my lead on this one. I don't have my jacket on, which is I have a welding jacket. I don't have pants on. If you're doing a lot of welding, you do not want to dress this way to weld. So do it. Same thing I tell my kids. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, let me get some outrage. Right Bring it back. All right, voila. Now she's still a little hot. She might need to be brushed up and painted a little bit, but there you go. Now you have about a 27, 28 pound weight. Now you just stick your bar straight through the hole. We will set up a little bracket on the side to keep it from falling off. But one down, three more to go. All right, so we're almost done. Um, I do have my pole here. Kind of what I was saying earlier. I'm gonna take these little guys here. I'm gonna put four of them up there, and I'm just gonna weld it there, weld it there, weld it there, and then weld on one on the bottom. So it's gonna be some all the way around. And what that's gonna do is keep the weights from getting into my hands. So first we need to clean it. Then we just need to tack these in there, make sure that they work, and put them in. So let's go. All right, so I know I said I was going to drill and tap this, um, but there's an easier way. I have plenty of nuts and bolts. I'm just gonna weld the nut, drill the hole, weld the nut, and then you can just screw it back and forth. And to make it easy, so I don't have to have a wrench up there, every time I wanna turn this off, I might just put another um, uh, bolt going this way, weld it up, so then I can just turn it and it'll be like a butterfly nut. Let's get this thing drilled. Yes, that's the tie wrap, holding my battery together. All right, so when you're drilling uh, into metal, good thing is to get yourself a hammer and a punch. And what this is going to do is create a small dimple. Just clean that off, drill that in, and bam, should be in good shape. So the bar will stick in there. Then you tighten down the, tighten that down, and it should hold it in place. So let's go. All right, we're almost ready to work out. All right, so what we need to do now, what's left is to weigh everything. Uh, we have to have an idea of where we're at, what our marks are, and how we're gonna do that. With, uh, and actually we're gonna do that with a regular floor scale. All right, so we're gonna turn this guy on. Go. All right. So we're gonna find out. So I have this board here because it's a glass top and I don't wanna break it. Um, but we are going to put every little piece that we have onto this so we can actually easily add them up. Hopefully we're more than likely just gonna round them to like the nearest thing. Like if it's 31 pounds, we might say just 30, whatever. We're gonna, uh, it doesn't have to be exact uh, cause once we get back into the gyms, then we'll be able to do it then. So let's measure all these up. I'm gonna put a little mark on each one with and since this is we're working on uh working with automotive stuff i have a punch kit that we're actually going to put the weight on it so that i can easily uh take care of it so uh what else do we do here the bench itself which is right here i picked this up i did do a lot of a lot of searching for it there's not a lot of them out there right now because everybody's picking them up because well it's a pandemic can't go to the gym we want to still stay fit uh everybody's picking these up that is the main reason why I have put this together with a bunch of crap that I had laying around the shop. All right, so this guy right here, this is the, leaf, the rear leaf spring from the K5 Blazer. 
I did put some um, brackets on there. Whoops, don't fall over. Uh, some brackets to be able to put it to the bar. Um, also put a, uh, and actually this is exhaust tubing. So it is right at 55 pounds just for this guy right here. All right, so these, whoop, stay. These are the front lead springs of that K5 Blazer. Also with the same type of brackets as we did before. Uh, these came out of a network rack. That's the exhaust tubing. We're right at 30 pounds. So these are 30. Beautiful. These are pretty cool. You go up there. Now, if I would have done this differently, I would have moved this over here to give me a little more extra room because some of the other weights that I'm getting ready to weigh kind of gets in the way. Is a brake disc from the Honda Odyssey. And that is right around 13 pounds. So, 13, all right. Now, this is the rear brake from the 545 BMW. No longer have. These are roughly 16 pounds. All right. One of the things I do like to do is um, grab like a 45 when I'm at the gym and, uh, and do whatever heck that is. Maybe do like some work out the handles, you know, that type of thing. So what we're gonna use for that is this guy. Now this, anyway, this is the flywheel off of the 97 Dodge. Uh, it is a diesel. So this thing's got some beef on it and it's dirty. Yeah, look at all that dirt. All right, so this guy here is, okay, great. It just shut off. All right, zeroed out. And this is, 55 pounds. Mm. So that's gonna be a little bit heavy, but I guess I will work my way up to it. All right, let's do a quick rundown of what we have. We have brake discs that are roughly anywhere from 13 to 16 pounds. We have uh, leaf springs front and rear of a K5 Blazer. Those are going to be our heavier weights. We got about 55 ish pounds, and then we also have uh, 30 pounds. So we have sets of each. We have our clamps that are right down there. Now, the bar itself, you saw me weld this up earlier. So basically, it is again, it's a one and a half inch uh, DOM 120 wall. Um, might have a slight concern about this a little bit later about bending if I put too much weight on there. So I might start with uh, lower. Um, lower weight, more rep type of thing just to get back into it. But anyway, I welded these things here. These are actually, um, yeah, parts of a fence that I no longer needed. So I cut those down and welded those up. I got some on both sides. Now the tape itself, this is just guides. Uh, when you're actually at the gym, they have like little grip handles and stuff like that. So this right here is a dead center, right? Take that off. Anyway, this is dead center. This would be one hand grip. That would be the other hand grip. So we should be ready to go. The uh, bench itself, I just got, I picked it up online, finally came in the other day. Uh, I believe it came from Walmart of all places. Uh, it's pretty trick as far as the design, the quality of it, I would have to say it does make me a little bit nervous when I put like 300 plus pounds, pounds on this bar. Now let's go over to the other sta station. Now I just have a simple little uh, moving blanket. Uh, this is going to be where I'm going to be doing my sit-ups push-ups you know that type of thing we're going to come over here i just got some simple dumbbells uh, i'm not sure exactly what's on there so i'm going to get a quick workout workout in um thanks you guys for watching hopefully this will give you some ideas uh in desperate times desperate measures whichever one you want to call it uh this is what i got to do in order to try to stay in shape so anyway catch you later enjoy yourself be safe and be creative Fix your problems by using your brain. Later. Whoa.